there brought hope from despair. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Good morning. Welcome to Worship in Jesus' Name on this fourth Sunday in Lent and also Pi Day. It's 3.14, so if you have opportunity and are a math geek, have a piece of pie today. So I won't tell you that Elaine can have some available at the cookie jar because I'm sure they don't. <laughs> but um, So let's see, just a couple of things about the service. I know we have more people starting to return to in-person worship, which is wonderful. Um, but a few things, if you haven't been here before, um, we are serving communion today, so if you're at home, you might want to have communion elements ready for when we get to that part of the service. But hopefully as you came in, you picked up your communion kits from the table. If you didn't, you can raise your hand and um, Kay will get you one. Um, so over here. <laughs> but um, when we get there, we have communion in the pew. So I do the words of institution. We say the Lord's Prayer, and then when I say the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ, that's when... It's a two-peel process, so the top layer of your cup, uh, peel the cellophane back, and there's a wafer there, and you would re receive the wafer, and then pull back the foil, and that opens the cup for the grape juice. So, um, um, so that's how that works, and then you just put your empty back in the Ziploc bag um, to put in the wastebasket, um, which I just realized, and I'm looking out the door, I forgot to get the wastebasket to the door, but... I can do that. Kay will do that for me. So, um, so that's how that works. And also, um, we are not singing yet. We have our worship team that's singing the songs, but the words will be on the screen for your, so you can see them and meditate on them while you hear the music. Um, we're anticipating we'll be able to sing shortly um, as our numbers and as the guidance coming out is, is saying um, that's, that's a possibility in the near future. So. Um, and then everything is on the screen, so we're not handing out actual bulletins to people. Um, so those are a few words about the service. Um, just a couple calendar reminders. Uh, the high school youth meets this evening at 7 for a dinner theater rehearsal. There are Facebook Live devotions Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 in the morning. And then also on Tuesday is the foot care clinic. Um, our nurse follows COVID protocols, so it's very safe to come, but there. There are two appointment slots left, and they are in the afternoon. Um, so if you're interested, you can talk to Rita, um, who's here this morning, and she can fill in those slots for you. Then, of course, on Wednesday, we have our midweek Lenten worship at 6.30, and the middle school youth group follows that. Our uh, service and mission project right now is collecting socks and underwear for both the Children's Home Society and the Children's Inn. So if you want to participate, you can purchase those things and bring them and set them on the table out in the narthex, and then we'll deliver them later on this spring. And then we are still taking orders for Easter lilies to decorate the sanctuary for Easter. There was an order form in the newsletter, and there's also some slips on the information table. Next Sunday is the deadline for ordering those, so we have to get the order into the greenhouse. So if you're planning on that, um, you can fill out the forms and leave them in the offering plate. And the offering plate is on the table as you go out the door. Um, we are not passing it in the sanctuary. So I think those are all the particular, oh, and just another word on the service. We're standing for the reading of the gospel and then for the creed and the prayers. That's when we stand, otherwise we're remaining seated these days. So um, again, welcome to worship in Jesus' name. And we begin with our order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out, out your, your mercy, mercy over us. Our, our sin, sin is heavy. heavy and, and we, we long, long to be free. free. 
rebuild what, what we have ruined, ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the Spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. And we hear our gathering song. I pray my grace through faith. We're saved. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Glory in the highest, glory be to God. Glory in the highest, and peace to all the earth. Glory in the highest, glory be to God. Glory in the highest, and peace to all the earth. Shaper of the universe, shaper of the universe, thanks and praise we sing. Thanks and praise we sing. Loving Father, caring Mother. Loving Father, caring Mother. Hold us in your wings. Hold us in your wings. Glory in the highest. Glory be to God. Glory in the highest. And peace to all the earth. Glory in the highest. Glory be to God. Glory in the highest, and peace to all the earth. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. You wash our sins away. You wash our sins away. At your table, all are welcome. At your table, all are welcome. Hear us as we pray. Hear us as we pray. Glory in the highest. Glory be to God, glory in the highest, and peace to all the earth. Glory in the highest, glory be to God, glory in the highest, and peace to all the earth. Holy Spirit, source of life, Holy Spirit, source of life, burning wild and free, burning wild and free. You are God the three in one. You are God the three in one. Such a mystery. Such a mystery. Glory in the highest. Glory be to God. Glory in the highest. And peace to all the earth. Glory in the highest. Glory be to God. Glory in the highest and peace to all the earth. Together let us pray. O oh God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light that all, all our, our deeds, deeds may reflect, reflect your, your love. love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The children can come up for the children's reading. Grab a spot. Nice job, William. Way to mix things up a little bit. We don't always have to sit in our same spots, do we? You guys can move from that pew if you wanted to. <laughs> but you probably won't, will you? That's okay. I love you being up in front. Today we are talking about the light of the world. Tell me how you feel if you accidentally hurt your brother or sister, how do you feel, CJ? Sorry. Sorry? How do you feel? Sorry? Yeah. Tell me how you feel if you do something good for your brother or sister. You feel happy? Feel good? Yeah? Well, today we're talking about the light of the world and a man named Nicodemus who... Uh, Spend some time with Jesus talking about things making people feel good and maybe people feel not so good. So for those at home, we are on page 416, if you're following along at home in our Spark Bible today. So it's called The Light of the World. In the middle of the night, a man named Nicodemus came to see Jesus. It was a strange time to visit someone, but Nicodemus had many questions about God, and he didn't want to wait. There was a lot of talk about Jesus. 
Many people didn't believe Jesus, and Nicodemus wasn't sure what he thought about it all. He also wasn't sure he wanted anyone to see him. He knew that Jesus was talking about God in a whole new way, and some people didn't like it. That night, Jesus and Nicodemus talked for quite a while. They argued and wondered and, <clears throat> and wondered together about many things. Can you imagine arguing with Jesus? That would be probably an argument you wouldn't win, is it? Yeah. yeah. And then Jesus said, Really? All you need to know is this. God loves you. In fact, God loves everyone. And it's important that you know this and tell everyone you meet. God wants everyone to know how much they are loved. Nicodemus, God loves this world and everyone in so, it so much that God sent me, his son, so that everyone would learn how much they are loved. God sent me to save the world, Nicodemus. I am the light of the world. I am all that is good and right. And God sent me to light up this world. Unfortunately, people sometimes like darkness better than light. When we do terrible things, the light is not in us. When we are mean, hateful, and horrible, the world is a dark, dark place. That's where when we're, when we're mean or when we do something naughty, we don't feel very good about it, do we? Yeah. But when we do things that are good and right, when we love each other and help one another, God's light shines brightly in the world, and God is glad. And that's what makes us feel good. That's where those happy thoughts come from, isn't it? So, if you could sit down and talk with Jesus, what do you think you'd ask him? What's a question you'd ask Jesus? What do you think, CJ? When are you coming back to earth? When are you coming back to earth? That is a great question. That's a question we'll be asking our entire lives, isn't it? Yeah. Unless he comes back to earth. Unless he comes back to earth, true. What question? What, William, do you have a question? What question do you ask for Jesus? You, know, you wouldn't have any questions for Jesus? No? Well, let's go out today and be the light of the world, okay? So I want you to focus this week on being that light and doing what's right and making people feel good, okay? Thank you for coming up today. Have a wonderful week. first lesson today comes from Numbers 21, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out on the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, the person who would look at the serpent of bronze would live. The word of the Lord. The second lesson comes today from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and the sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive with Christ. By grace you have been saved." and raised up with him and seated, 
and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ, so that in all the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are all what he has made, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Glory to you, glory to you, glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, glory to you, glory to you, O Lord. The gospel for today comes from John, the third chapter, beginning with verse 14. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. The light has come into the world. God has given the sun that we might have life. We hear some very familiar biblical passages today. John 3, 16, right? God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And really what might be called our Lutheran theme verse. It is by grace you have been saved through faith, not your own doing the gift of God. Right? The light has come. Jesus is here and there is life. So these very familiar words proclaim the promise and work of God. And yet we also hear, people love darkness rather than the light. We might say, well, how can this be? Why do people remain in darkness when life and light are in the world through Christ? Well, it reminds me of a story I once read that goes like this. There was a pregnant woman who was visiting a friend. And she talked about um, how she still wanted to look attractive, especially for her husband, but she felt instead that she had reached that stage of pregnancy where she just looked like a beached whale. Right? Well, the friend encouraged her to, you know, maybe try some. She said, here, I have, here's, here's a nightgown. Try this on, and then then we'll dim the lights a little bit. And maybe, you know, with the dim light and that, you'll feel attractive. And so the friend, you know, put on this nightgown and they're in this room where they could dim the lights. And so, so her friend dimmed the lights and she said, no, I think a little more, a little more. And she made them lower and it's like, no, not quite yet. And, and this kept going on until finally the lights were off and it was completely dark. And then from the darkness, you could hear this woman say, my goodness, I'm beautiful, right? You know, in the dark, in the dark, we can pretend that we are something we are not. Um, we don't have to look at maybe the broken pieces of ourselves. We don't have to deal with the sinful nature that is a part of us. Um, that we are in bondage to sin and can't free ourselves. We can deny and pretend that things are okay in the dark. 
And, um, and there is a part of us that would like to do that, that bondage to sin, to just say, you know, I think I'm okay. I don't have to deal with it. I can just hide it away, and maybe things will be okay. But it really doesn't change who we are, what we have done, where we are in our lives, that we are this broken, sinful people, um, that we are people like those in the wilderness, even though they had been blessed by God with food every day, start to complain and forget about the blessings of God. And so um, we kind of hide in that darkness. We hide in that darkness, and sometimes it can feel comfortable, and we can sit there and say, my goodness, I'm beautiful. Right? Well, as Jesus comes, full of light and grace, in his light we can't help but see our brokenness. Now, Nicodemus comes to Jesus because he has somehow been confronted with something in himself and wants to find out more, wants to find out what Jesus is up to and what, what Jesus has to give him. Um, when, we, when we come into that light, we see who we are. There's a story told about Socrates, the great philosopher. He had a friend who was also a philosopher, but this friend would always say to Socrates, I hate you, Socrates. I hate you. For every time I meet you, you let me see what I am. Next to Socrates, this guy was not as great a thinker or teacher or philosopher. And when he came into the greatness of Socrates, he realized that and had to deal with that, that he was not as great as he thought he was. Well, when we meet this one, Jesus, who is greater than ourselves, we see that we are not all that we thought we were or what we have pretended to be. We see our brokenness and our sin. And because of that, we come under judgment. Right? We come under judgment. And it's hard to think about judgment. We don't want a God who punishes. But God does not judge us without cause. You know, the people in the Old Testament story forgot about God and all that God provided. The judgment came not because God was just sitting there waiting to catch them doing something wrong. It came because they turned away from God. Um, and they rationalized away their slavery and they were willing, as we hear in other parts of this Exodus story, they were willing you know, to trade their freedom to go back to Egypt for melons and cucumbers. Right? They came under judgment. They came under judgment. And God um, passes judgment so that they might live. Um, it's like one, one use of the, the commandments is, as God gives the commandments and shows us this way to life, is we realize we can't keep them. We can't keep them at all. And that we need a Savior. Um, and, you know, if God had excused or gave in to their complaining, they would have gone back. They would have gone back to Egypt. God, though, intends life for his people, and so God acts. And God provides the means for them to be healed. God provides a sign. And so God extends mercy. We have a merciful God. Right? And God uses the very thing that is the result of the judgment to show that mercy. Now, in our Old Testament story, God promises that if people look at this serpent on the rod, they will live. Right? Face your sin. Admit your sin. Turn to God and live. See the gift that is already given. And so it is with the cross. As God comes to our world in Jesus, he goes to the cross. And the very thing that was a symbol of death and destruction and shame is now a sign of love that gives life and hope. The cross of crucifixion becomes the way to life. So God takes the very things of the dark, and through his lights, he makes them into things of grace and life. There is grace in the world. That is what God is all about, extending grace to people who are broken and sinful in nature. Um, and if we only quickly read these texts, um, it might seem that we have some control over this work of God, right? 
Okay, if I only look at the snake, I'll live. Um, if I only do this, I'll live. But this, this grace is, is a gift. It's already there. God does the work while we are still sinners. Ephesians talks about that. While we are broken people, sinful people, Jesus comes and dies for us. And these very well-known passages affirm this. You know, God loves the world. God loves and God gives. By grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. God loves the world. God loves you so that you who believe, and that ability to believe, it's not even coming from us. It comes from the Holy Spirit at work in us. So that those who believe, we have life in Jesus' name. And God gives this life as a gift of grace. We do not deserve it or earn it. It's right there. It's like I mentioned last week, as we come for communion, we come with nothing. We put out our empty hand. We turn to God. We come before the cross. And we say, God, I can't do it. And God says, I know. So here's life. I do it. This is my body. This is my blood. And as we turn and look to God, as Christ is lifted up on the cross for all of us, we find that as our confession said, that absolution said, we are showered in the grace of God. It flows from God to us. Jesus went into the darkness, and he defeated it. His life light shines, and no darkness can overcome it. His light is the light of enduring love. From the cross, the love of God shines forth, and it shines on you. It is a gift. It is for you. God so loves you that he gave his only son that you shall not perish, but you shall have life now and always. Amen. And we hear our song of the day. Grace, we have been saved, saved by grace through faith, not because of what we do, it is the gift of God. By grace, we have been saved, saved by grace through faith, not because of what we do, it is the gift of God. On the days when you are weak, on the days when you are strong, rich or poor, young or old, just listen to the song. By grace we have been saved, saved by grace through faith. Not because of what we do, it is the gift of God. By grace we have been saved, saved by grace through faith. Not because of what we do, it is the gift of God. Rest your body, rest your mind. In the stillness you will find. You are lovely, precious child, part of the great design. By grace we have been saved, saved by grace through faith. Not because of what we do, it is the gift of God. By grace we have been saved, saved by grace through faith. Not because of what we do, it is the gift of God. You don't need to be afraid. You will never be alone. There is mercy, there is hope, and love will take you home. 
by grace we have been saved, saved by grace through faith. Not because of what we do, it is the gift of God. By grace we have been saved, saved by grace through faith. Not because of what we do, it is the gift of God. Would you stand as you are able for the creed and the prayers? We do confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended, he ascended into, into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh God, you sent your Son that the world might be saved through him. Inspire the witness of your church throughout the world. Empower missionaries, Bible translators, and ministries of service in your name. Bless all our partners in ministry, our ELCA Global Partner Churches, and the Young Adults in Global Mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. From east to west, your steadfast love is shown. Nourish seas and deserts, wilderness areas and cities. Give water to thirsty lands. Nurture spring that feeds hungry creatures. And bless farmers as they prepare for the growing season. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You sustained your people in the wilderness. Give courage to all who lead in times of crisis and scarce resources. Prosper the work of those who aid victims of famine and drought, and bring peace in places where scarce resources cause violence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Your mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry or without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant and bring your healing power to those who are sick and comfort those who mourn. And we lift before you those we name in our hearts and those on our prayer list, including Paul, Neil, Dick, Milas, Nancy, Les, and those still suffering with God. Your mercy is great. By grace we have been saved. Fill this congregation to overflowing with that grace that we show mercy to others. Nourish any in our midst who are hungry, especially children, and bless our ministries of feeding and shelter. Give us patience and courage when the way seems long. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Your Son was lifted up that whoever believes might have eternal life. We praise you for all who have died in Christ, and bring us with all the saints into the fullness of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Well, please greet those around you with the peace of Christ in a non-contact way and turn to the camera to greet those who are worshiping at home that as they send greetings to you by, by typing in their comments. <laughs> so God's peace. And then you may be seated. And if there's any kids with noisy offering, we have brought the noisy offering thing back up. You could bring that up. But I do want to say thank you for all your gifts. Um, your offerings that are mailed and brought to church and done electronically are having a great impact on the world. And we receive thank yous each month from the ministries and organizations that we support. So thank you for making a difference and being lights that shine in the world. And we hear our offering song. Change 
reach my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. Together, let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and hear their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we join in the prayer our Savior gave us. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power, and the, and the glory, glory are yours, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ is given for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us together pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We hear our sending song. The Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My eyes have seen the salvation you have prepared in the sight of everyone. A light to reveal you to the nations And the glory of your people Israel Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace Your word has been fulfilled Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace Your word has been fulfilled my eyes have seen the salvation you have prepared in the sight of everyone. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. Sing Hosanna, 
to the king.